Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Kathy, who has an interesting story of how she's ended up in a, in a really nice uh, slide-in truck camper and out here in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so Kathy, how did you end up here in the middle of nowhere in a truck camper? Um, I have a master's degree and in science, I did the corporate thing for years, worked in the labs, did did the best I could with my job. I was diagnosed in 1998 with um, an immunodeficiency that was genetic, and I was born with it. And uh, that has eaten away at my joints, so I have no cartilage in either one of my hips. I am not a, I'm not a candidate for hip replacements because of the immunodeficiency. It's too great of a, a risk for infection. And I don't have resistance to infection, and so I am on uh, antibiotics every day for the rest of my life. I have to switch those out every two weeks so I don't get resistant. And um, I do also have PTSD from a very traumatic event that happened when I was 24. And the combination of all those, uh, just corporate America is not very kind to the disabled. I know there's the ADA, but um, it looks good on paper, but it doesn't really work in the real world. And I was sick frequently, and I also was in chronic pain, and the PTSD in corporate society just wasn't working. The constant stimulation, the constant overworking, the constant um, anti-human sentiment that corporate society seems to portray or not seems but does portray right um i need to be able to sit when i need to be able to sit and take care of myself and be sick when i need to be sick and just the stress of the towns i had to live in because of the science degree it, the the noise the traffic the the congestion the stress my ptsd was getting exponentially worse in about 2012 we had a family reunion and everybody was there with their RVs in this camp spot. And I thought, I could do this. I could do this because it was so peaceful by the lake and it was so peaceful in nature. I could feel that um, nature was healing. The sounds of the water and the sounds of nature really opened me up in a way that I hadn't encountered in the city. and. So I spoke to my family about it, and my dad, um, greatest man that ever lived, my father, he and I were very close. We talked to each other on the phone every day, and he just couldn't handle me being out alone. His daughter, you know, that he still thinks is five, out on the road, and I wasn't going to do that to him. So I put my life on hold so that my dad could sleep at night. And, but he passed away in 2014, and so then in 2015, I thought, okay, you know, I went through the grieving process. I didn't want to be doing this while I was grieving, and in 2015, I sold a bunch of stuff and bought the truck, and that was my first process. Okay, I had to, I had to take baby steps, so like, I'm really going to do this, because it seems so... Radical. Oh, great radical yeah. is a great word. Outrageous yeah, too. It, yeah, you know, and because I've been groomed, my father was an accountant. I've been groomed to be secure, stationary, buy a house, go to work, be safe, because that's society's view of safe. I feel safer moving around. Mm -hmm. Baby steps. I checked um, what I need to do. I, I, uh, with the disability, I had a, I had a nice house. And I lost that because when you go on disability, so I am on disability um, because of all the plethora of illnesses. And you go from making this nice salary to here you are, you know, so True. you've got to adjust to that. So I could not afford the house. So then I moved into um, HUD housing and it's a wonderful thing for people that can handle it. I just couldn't take it anymore, and so then I said, "Okay, we're gonna move up the we're gonna move up the date. We're gonna hustle with this." And so I started putting things up for sale and selling things gradually. And my friend helped me. God love her. My friend helped. She was awesome. I bought the truck camper. Um, 
it's what I wanted, and I went down, um, I drove 250 miles to look at the truck camper, and fell in love with it, bought it on the spot, guy loaded it up, so I've been full-timing since December 20th, and, um, This has been the best, it's not been easy, and I'm not going to candy coat my trip because my trip was really hard coming down here. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. I've met the most wonderful people on the way that have helped me, you know. The single best decision I've ever made in my life. I'm going to probably have to say the best decision. Um, I'm peaceful. I have no, I, I'm, I can stay as long as I want for two weeks, you know, but... Um, or go wherever I want. There's no hurry. There's no demand on my life. Um, now, I was on some serious pain management for eight years, um, which I knew I wouldn't be able to do that um, because the DEA is very strict about that kind of medication. It worked great. It kept me functional. Um, so, um, I really wanted to do this, and in May, I put myself through withdrawal <laughs> and so that would I mean you really know you want to do something when you're willing to go through that to make it happen I feel part of the earth I feel the vibrations of the earth I feel that that's healing me the fresh air is healing me the sun's healing me being out the quiet the people I mean, there's no way I'm going back. Good. <laughs> no way no way I mean I feel like if I can do it anyone can do it because I've got I've got you know the, the chronic pain the no cartilage I don't walk very well I need a walking stick I was on crutches until I got the walking stick I've got the PTSD uh, so I've got physical ailments and emotional ailments and the two combined weigh heavily on you it's a great world out there and I guess even with my PTSD starts to tell you it's a horrible world out there you must protect yourself at all times well I think my PTSD is going to get totally better out here because it's not a bad world and there are good people out here in fact there's more good people than bad people right and so i'm getting a, a real good education out here good okay why don't we go ahead and take a look inside your rig sure. so kathy why don't you go ahead and tell us about your the truck and camper you ended up with uh this is a ford f-250 banks turbo diesel um, it has a 7.3 liter engine. A legendary engine. Yes. And um, I, from the heartland, lots of people have trucks. So I made sure before I went out and got a truck that I got advice on what to purchase. And this was one of the trucks I was told to purchase with the year even. So I did wait until it came up and was notified on Craigslist. And then I found this um and it's a 1992. It only had 120,000 miles on it when I purchased it. When I, I, di I didn't want to get a later engine Ford because I didn't want any electronics in my right. engine because it's harder to, a lot more when it, something goes wrong, it takes longer to figure out what it is and that costs money and time. I got her road ready and um, then I went and purchased new tires. These are H tires. Um, 14 steel ply all-terrain tires. She rides as good with that camper on the back as she did when I drove her home from the farmers. Yeah, she doesn't even know. She's like, okay. So this is my baby. Tell us about your camper then. This is a Shadow Cruiser, 1992 Shadow Cruiser. And it was, it's uh, 1800 pounds dry. And so it was a nice light camper. It has a fiberglass front and a fiberglass back. And I like the fiberglass front because the wind and it's it's very aerodynamic. It hasn't decreased my gas mileage by much at all. And it was a very sturdy truck camper. I did a lot of research on the Shadow Cruisers. They don't make them anymore. Company bought them out and it now makes the Fun Finders. This is exactly what I wanted. And um, I paid $4,000 for it. And um, it's took a, take all my savings. I've done some some renovating of the inside. Um, as you can see, it's full of color. I like color. Color's healing. That's a laser laser art made for me by a guy from Hong Kong up there. 
And when I turn on the lights at night, it, it just, sh it's a hologram and it oh. really lights up. And um, here's, here's a piece of it. Oh, very, very beautiful. There was cabinetry all across the back that I took out um, because it, things were getting condensation when I was camping in the cold That's on the way issue. down. Yes. And so I took all that out. It opened it up. I took the bed out. My cat is a very high energy cat. He needs to play and I won't let him out. So he has to have room to play right. and otherwise he gets depressed and he has behavioral problems. So don't we all? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we don't get to play. Exactly. Well, there you go. So that's his play area up there. So I took the bed out. This is just um, the floor mm -hmm. to the to the loft. So it's the kitty play area. It's a kitty play area. Which is great. And that's my stretching area. Well, he knows, so he he's. He... I took the dinette out. Right. And this is my day bed. So I put a day bed in here. Um, and this is where I sleep. It's where I sit to read. It's where I lounge. And it's pleasant. It's very, very comfortable and pleasant. Yes. And at night, I can throw up the curtains and go to sleep looking at the stars. Up here is my, my records and my accounting and keep my, uh, just, you know, keep your business organized mm -hmm. so it's not chaotic. That back there is my little, my little, where I keep pencils and um, highlighters when I'm reading and that kind of goes on my lamp. Yeah. And then my meds, of course, are up here and my vitamins are up, are up here and all that kind of stuff. So we're now we're looking back. This is a very long uh, slide in. How long is it? 11 and a half, so, almost 12. It's a very big slide in. So you have a, a big fridge in the back and storage underneath it looks like? Right, and pass through storage to the outside that I have to have that duct taped because the cat knows how to open it. Uh. And there must be a closet there at That's the back corner. That's a closet corner. that turned into Fibber McGee's closet because it had a uh, clothing bar across it. And clothing bars in truck campers are not as sturdy as clothing bars in homes. And I put too many clothes on it and it crashed. So it's a learning process. This, I've had to duct tape these so that they stay shut when I travel, which totally took the finish off. But I'll just repaint them white, which is what I wanted to do in the first place. And this, I... Up here, I have to have some of my books. So they're packed in there so tight that they travel, they don't fall down at all. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And this over here is for the television, but I put my dishes up there. So I have um, just uh, stuffed bowls here. I do cook, I cook a lot. Um, and there's no reason not to. Yep. And then so you have a nice just, kitchen. You can cook, and uh, yes. that's probably important too to eat yes, well. Yes. Yes. And this is a pantry. This is where I put uh, spices and apple cider. I love apple cider. All my spices are in here. And of course, well, I have a buddy heater mm -hmm. down there that I love when it's cold. I don't need it anymore, but but um, it did did yes and it worked well it, it it's the medium it's the middle sized one mm -hmm. uh the large one would have been too much for this oh, yeah. small space it's 92 square feet so the small the small one was too small so i got the medium one which works great um this had a door on it but right. with the bed here it i could i had to take it off so i put a curtain this is where i store um his cat food um, oh i'm a little these, surprised it's not a pass through it is a pass-through to the outside, oh, uh -huh. and there is a pass-through to my truck. I see. Oh, right. I got you. And so there's doors on the outside. My battery bank is in this side over here. So I have an auxiliary battery, and it does charge off my alternator, and it's a 155-amp AGM uh -huh. battery. And this is uh, just a 12-volt plug that I have hooked to the battery, and it passes through, and then... I can plug, this is the inverter that I just plug in and, um, gives you 110 items. It, it, yes. And it just, it's a hundred watt, which I, I am going to get a larger inverter and a larger battery bank and solar. That's in my plan for before May. And it does light what I need it to light. 
storage underneath the bed? Yes, that's my cat litter. That is my trash can. This is my trash can. And then all under there is my boxes and boxes of yarn because I crocheted that rug. I made that rug. And um, so I make rugs. This is the bathroom. I uh, Nice, nice big bathroom. It is a big bathroom. It has a shower, the medicine cabinet. I do use the luggable loo. I don't use my black tank. And um, this is, I store stuff over the, on the shoe. It's a shoe rack, sure. my robe. And I put my towels, clean towels in a diaper bag. Mm -hmm. And that works real well. This is my shower. And you do shower. I you do, do but that. I use, I don't use the shower that came with it. This is my shower. It works off of siphon. So I put a hose in here with this, came off of, um, starts a with a Z, bag. a Z, it had, a, it had pump Zodai. on it. Zodai? Zodai, yes. yeah, this is a Zodai. I used to have one of those and then it broke, so I just, I, but I kept this, I thought. This is how I make sure I don't use too much water. So I heat the water up in, to boiling in my little kettle here, and then I add cold water. So this would be warm, nice warm water. A gallon of warm water will wash my hair and do everything I need it to do. So that is sealed. You have cocked it or something? This so is sealed, sealed with with caulking and glue, just any kind of sealant. Right. You seal the hose. And then you have to have an air hole. Okay. And we have to go in here because it'll spill. Yes. That's what it's supposed to do. And if it want, if it's gonna work, now see my goal is to get a shower tent so it can hang higher than me mm -hmm. and be outside. Mm -hmm. And this, you put an air hole, you have to prime it, and so you just, you can either squeeze it or just blow on the hole. Oh, just to get it started, then it goes. Yeah, and then it just, well. You hang it up there. There is my shower. Oh, wow. How about that? Then you just break the siphon, which is raise it above. The hose and it shuts off your soap pop. Then you just do it again. Prime it again and now that's a brilliant idea I've never seen before. <laughs> and and nothing but a used uh, a used uh, milk jug. Yeah, yeah, literally. And a, and, a, and a hose as old Zodi hose. You can get hose and I think you can get these. I think you can anywhere. Well, you could buy a ten dollar Coleman outdoor shower and it'll soon break. And right. <laughs> record. Yeah, so that's a really brilliant idea on uh, on shower. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for sharing your life with us, and uh, you've been through some hard times, but it looks like you may have found a, a way forward. Yes, yes, where I don't feel like I'm constantly moving uphill. Right, some hope, a light at the end of the tunnel. Big light at the end of the yes. tunnel. Uh, and thank you for sharing your beautiful camper. It really is uh, a beautiful home. It's, it's me. So you and your <laughs> So everyone, I hope you got something out of this video. I am certain you did. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.